Uh, he made a way for you. Hallelujah. If he made a way for you, I can just tell him thank you. Yeah, he made a way for me. He made a way for me. And there seemed to be no way. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We just love the Lord. Amen. Amen. We just thank him so much. Amen. He blessed. Amen. You my wife. <laughs> Amen. As we travel back from uh, California. Amen. Amen. He kept us there. He kept us back. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. My wife, amen, is not feeling so well. Amen. I think she picked up a head cold. Amen. Amen. But the Lord blessed us. Give us time. Amen. amen to rest and give us time to go see some things and enjoy ourselves. We had a great time. Nothing like being in the house of God. Yeah. And then amongst the people of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to go a different route this morning. Amen. And I want you to be involved. But let me set the ground rules. When you get involved, it's going to be an interaction Bible study. Amen. God show me the scripture. Amen. And I've never read it in the Bible before. And so what I want us to do is if you have anything to interject or if you have a question or if I call upon you to read the scripture, I want you to hold your hand up like this. And then what's going to happen is that uh, Sister Keisha, the usher, is going to come and hand you the microphone so that they can hear you uh, either ask your question or quote the scripture. Amen? Because that way you can hear it. I had somebody give me some feedback on our live stream, and that was one of the things that they could hear people when they read scripture. And uh, not only could they not hear people when they read scripture, but that uh, people that sat right behind the camera were too loud. <laughs> <laughs> they were too loud. And you could hear them over the preaching. And that's uh, because they're sitting right there. And so, uh, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, uh, in the book of Proverbs, I want you to understand this and give this. This is a powerful to me. And uh, I want to ask you some questions. And uh, I want to get your, uh, your response to some questions. In the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 27, and verse 19, 27, and verse 19, amen. Uh, I want you to look at the scripture. And uh, it's amazing to me that me and my wife had not spoken uh, about, she was up early this morning praying, I could hear her. And as I could hear her praying, amen, uh, on the way down there, she said, the Lord gave me the scripture. And uh, it corresponds, correlates to what we're going to talk about here today. Amen? And so, in Proverbs 27, in verse 19, it says, As in water, face answers to face. <laughs> so, the heart of man to man, the Bible says. Amen? And so, I want to uh, talk to you today, face to face, man to man. And I want you to talk woman to woman. We're going to have a discussion. <laughs> face to face. Amen. Man to man. And y'all are going to talk women, women to women. All right. And so uh, it's interesting to me that everything that we need in the script, in, in, in our lives is in the Holy Scriptures. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's amazing that when God opens up the word and he gives us in-depthness of the word, that we can find out where we're at and we can we can understand each other better, right? Uh, oftentimes, it's hard for people to be themselves and to be real in church. And I wonder why people spend more time wearing a mask than what they would do if they would just be real. Somebody said, be real. Be, be real. real. Amen. And so, we're amongst friends there, so we can be real. Amen? Amen. Uh, knowing ourselves uh, better, we know ourselves better than anyone but God. God knows us better. Right? So you know yourself better than I know you. You know yourself better than the person sitting across you knows you. Amen? And so you you know yourself, and then God knows all about us. How many of you know that God knows all about us? Amen. 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 And so... Uh, 
being honest with our frailties and our insecurities, mm -hmm. being honest. And so sometimes coming into the house of God and being able to get something Amen. from God, uh, you're going to have to be honest. Amen. Right? And so everybody knows anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. And so people have a hard time being honest, even with themselves. Alone, being honest with God. That's right. And so, when you can be honest with yourself, you free yourself up to receive something from God. Amen. Right? Because God already knows about it anyway. Right? right? Not too much what people think. That's right. Right? Amen. Because people don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. That's right. <laughs> right? And so, and so you, people worry too much about people. Now, if I would and some of y'all wouldn't be up front and honest, and I would say, how many of y'all are concerned about what people think? Some of y'all wouldn't raise your hand, but deep down, you're concerned about what people think. So, let's try. How many of y'all care about what people think? I got a few honest people. Some people say, you don't care. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Dep depends on who it is. Right. Yeah. Depends on who it is. Right. That came out of his and, so, and, so, and so, some people will say that, but to be truthfully honest, People do care what people think. Mm -hmm. To a certain extent, they do. Mm -hmm. Right? Especially boys, uh, if he's a good uh, phobia, a good friend of yours. Yes. Yeah, and that hurts Right. That hurts you. What they think about, or they don't think about. So to say that, you know, I don't really care. Being judged by the past. Mm -hmm. That's another one I wrote down. I wrote down hurt, uh, uh, fear. Fear of being uh, judged from their past. And so people think that if I really come open and, and show my heart to the Lord, then people are going to know what I have to say, and I'm afraid that they're going to hold that against me. And so strategically, you're going to have to learn how to be open. Because they're spiritual. They're not going to judge me. Right. You ever told somebody something that held it against you? Mm -hmm. And they use that to keep you down. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be careful, even in relationships, what you involve, or what you devolve in relationship. Because sometimes people can use it to work it against you. Mm -hmm. right? If they know that you are 
they, they know that you, if they know that you have a problem with uh, low self-esteem, then they'll do certain things to keep you on the hook. Yeah. Am I knowing what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so, and so they'll do certain things. And so, uh, sometimes people will use what you have against you and hold it over your head. That's why I never allowed anyone to hold anything over my head. I just come out with it. Amen. And I really hold nothing over my head. <laughs> right? And so, and so fear was one of being hurt, and Brother Mike has one. Shame and embarrassment. Yeah. That's, uh, they're, they're ashamed because people think that I'm the only one going through what I'm going through. Right? And, uh, and no one else is faced with the problems that I'm faced with but me. Right? And so, truth be told, that the same things that you're going through are the same things that other people are going through. That's right. Some of them just won't say anything. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And they'll wait till you get up and God has given you the victory. And then you'll get up and say, God has blessed me through it. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. then they'll say, oh, I was going through that too. <laughs> <laughs> and then people will come and people will make like, okay, well, uh, uh, I'm doing okay. But really, you're not okay. Here's another one that I thought of. People are afraid of confrontation. Yes. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Confrontation. People don't want to confront with certain things about themselves. Right. right. And so sometimes when people are afraid of confrontation, what they'll do is they'll go and try to push it off on something else or somebody else. But they got to confront yourself. Right. Can't be worried about nobody else. You have to be able to confront what's going on with you. Yeah. Right? And so, you ever met people that always say that it's always somebody else's fault? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, uh, I meet people on my job in my profession, and they'll say, when I worked over there, they treat me like this, and then I work that job, they treat me <laughs> like this, and now I'm over here, y'all treat me like that. And I'm saying, it's not them. It's you. <laughs> You're the problem. <laughs> Everybody can't be the problem. <laughs> Right? And so, and so, not that certain things don't happen, but if they treat you wrong everywhere you've been, <laughs> there's one common denominator. You are the common denominator. <laughs> if every church that you went through to, there was trouble. Got in some trouble over there. Went over there and I got in some trouble. Ended up over there and I got in some trouble. Caused an argument over there. And now I'm here, but then you're the trouble. And so let's deal with you, right? And how that God can help us get through our problems, being upfront and honest, transparent. Amen? Amen. And so uh, here's one. Uh, here in the scripture, it says, as in water, uh, face answers to face. Here in this application, water is a mirror. Hmm. Who was it that said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror? Michael Jackson. Y'all been telling y'all on me now. Y'all been like y'all so churchy. They so churchy in here. Y'all know Rick right well, y'all know what Michael Jackson said. All right, raise your hand. Raise your hand. And then all of a sudden, you ask, see, that's how church people are. They want to be transparent. They make the pastor leave him out there to live like he's the only one doing how he's back. Now we're living life. Right? Ain't got no help in here. Sister Beverly, you don't, wanna, you don't remember that, do you? Yes, I do. Okay. And so it's used as an application as a mirror. Right? And, uh, by which we see our face by reflection. Mm -hmm. The water, when it's still, is a mirror and it reflects what it sees. Right. Oh God. Well, what happens when you don't like what you see? Mm. <laughs> yeah. What happens when uh, uh, you, what you see, see, with a mirror, uh, you can put on a smile, but that mirror will still let you know that something's wrong. Your smile ain't right. Uh, 
And so the application is there is that what we look at is what reflects back to us. Well, what happens, what happens when you don't have a mirror? What happens then? Right? And then you have to see your reflection uh, that it projects back when you look at a person. You're not looking at yourself in the mirror. Now you're looking at other people. How many, know, how many know that uh, mirrors don't lie? Right. <laughs> no matter how you try to cover it up, no matter how you try to smile, but uh, the mirror. Every time. I used to, I used to do this before I got saved, and uh, I used to go out and uh, I would play hard. I was one of them hard to <laughs> I some of y'all with Jesus. Yeah. Some of y'all with Jesus. Yeah. Y'all did everything I yeah. And so I would go out and uh, I'd wake up the next morning and I would be like, man, why did I do that? I shouldn't have done that. And here's what I would do. I would go in the bathroom and I'd look in the mirror. Right. And I would look, just stand there and stare in the mirror. And I would say, why am I doing this? I know that it's got to be something better. Yeah. I know it has got to be something yeah. different. Right. Because the mirror will project Uh, but when uh, you look in the face of another person, can you project what you want them to see? Now, in the mirror, you can't lie to the mirror. Right. But when I see you, like I'm looking at you now, can you project mm -hmm. in the face of another person yes. what you want them to see? Yes. 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 But the reflection is in the mirror. That's right. What church is about? The church has become a, a place where people feel like that they can't be themselves. That's right. So you put on a mask. 
And your mask is saying uh, one thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit of God is telling me something else. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. Sister Teresa, if you take my thunder, I'll <laughs> just erase that stuff. <laughs> I just remember when I left my home church and went to move to Baltimore, mm -hmm. I started going to a church there. It was a big church, a mm -hmm. large church. And so it was easy for me to slip in and slip out yeah. and hide, you know, and not have relationship with people because it was such a large congregation. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, you know, with church, some people use that as a hiding place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, because uh, like you said, sometimes people feel like, okay, I've been hurt. Or I don't want to really divulge who I am, and so I slip in, hear the word, and then I slip back out. Uh, and so even in small congregations, uh, you'll see people, if you're watching, I remember, <laughs> I remember you alluded to me the, the other day, and say, look, they just got up and walked right out of here. And so people are watching, right? Even when you think you're in a large church and you think nobody sees you, the person sitting next to you down the aisle from you sees when they say, go and interact if you get up and slip out of the church. <laughs> and then more than that, God sees you because you're not dealing with your core issues. That's right. That's right. And the core issue is you. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> and a lot of times, when you don't like what you see in the mirror, uh -huh. then you'll try to change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Brother Daniel. Sorry to make you move so much. <clears throat> That's all. This is exercise. Son. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just it, it just reminds me that you know when I gave my life to God and I got I got saved in prison, but I didn't fit the part or look the part. So the ministers that were coming, you know, they were just <laughs> exalting all these other people. I mean, literally, man was exalting, mm -hmm. and I was saying to myself, so. Does Christianity have a look? Do I have to dress a certain way or present myself a certain way? Or do I just have to be it? And you know, I was, I was kind of hurt because I was caught in between a look versus an action. Mm -hmm. And I was confused for a long time. I discussed it with my wife. I was confused. Like, I know I got the, the Holy Spirit. I know I love the Lord. I know the Lord loves me. But why does it seem like because I don't fit the profile or have the mannerisms that the people that God had, I guess, elected didn't see me as an election. Right. And it kind of, and, and, but instead of hurt, it fueled, it fueled me. And it was anger at first, and that was the wrong kind of fuel. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it took a while. It really did. Mm -hmm. It took a while. So, so what happens is, is that, uh, and we went over the scripture, we were talking about discipleship. And a lot of times people get caught up. And I know places where people are just, if you look the part, they're just happy that you look the part. They don't care if you have the part. They just, they're just happy about you look right. the part. And so if you look the part and carry your Bible and you dress right, got on your night, and then you look the part, they, even though you're an empty shell, they don't care. They just, you just look the part. Right. Right? And then there's people who may not look the part, but they're full of the power of God. Right. right? And so then they get looked over and skipped over right. because they're just looking for a specific look. Right. Remember we talked about this as discipleship. Jesus said, by you having love one for another, this is how I know you're my disciple. Right, not by the way you look, not by, not by how you carry your Bible, not by uh, what, but how you have love one for another. And so, and so people will overlook you just to get somebody to fit the part. Well, I thank God that God doesn't look as man looks on the outward yeah. appearance. That's going to take me to my next point. Yes. But God looks at the heart. Yes. And so in order for you, that's a good segue, in order for you to look at the heart, you must have discernment. Yes. You've got to have discernment. And that because people will project to you something different. Right. They'll wear that mask. Yes. But if you have discernment, you can discern, I see you smile, but I know you're hurting on the inside. Mm. I see you clapping your hands, 
But your praise is empty. Because you're hurting. I see you coming, but you're not being fulfilled. Jesus. Jesus. Why? Because you won't open yourself up because you've been hurt before so that God can pour out upon you. Yes. I can tell through discerning that you're just, you ever see people, you're just going through the motions. Yeah. And so, y'all remember last week we were talking about worship, and I said, as the Spirit of God was moving, I said, there is a certain sound. Mm -hmm. yes. The freedom comes with a sound. Yes. Amen. When you're liberated, it comes with a sound. Yes. But when you're in bondage, it has another sound. <laughs> and so, the man of God and the people of God have to have discernment. Yes. To discern. Because people will think you out. It's almost like a crossover behind the back. Hmm. If you can't keep up with it, keep going. Boop. They'll cross you up. Right? And so, and so, I'm not going to let nobody cross me up. Don't you let nobody cross you up. Somebody said, you got to have discernment. Now, could you imagine that if you had discernment 10 years ago, you wouldn't be in the position that you are probably in now? And so, uh, uh, the believer needs discerning of spirits. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Uh, where you're at. Keisha, Keisha, give them uh, Mike, the sister, Amanda, while you're back there. The book of Acts, chapter 16. She like, oh my. Why he called me? I don't feel like reading. I'm going to call you again. I'm going to call you again now. Acts 16, verse 16 through 8. Oh, I deserve that. I picked up on her body last night. <laughs> Acts chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. Here's an example of this army. And it came to pass, as he went to prayer, a certain angel, uh, pos possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by sooth saying. Mm -hmm. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God. Which you unto us the way of salvation. And this did and and this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of and he came out the same hour. Amen. So here now the sermon is used because there's a woman. Thank you. There's a woman who is saying something. These be the men of the most high God. Now, some of y'all, if she was saying that, would have ran and said, Prophetess, divination. And they'd be saying, she's speaking the word of God. But she said, these be the men that be of God. Now, this happened many days. Why do you think it took many days? It took many days because he was discerning that spirit. Right? And then uh, he said uh, to her, he became greedy. In the spirit. Nobody ever experienced being grieved in your spirit? Yeah. Your spirit grieves. That happens sometimes. All of a sudden, you will break out and start crying for no reason. Or something just don't feel right and it just don't go right with you. You ever had that happen? Yeah. And this something right here. Right? And so he was grieved. And he said, as he turned to the spirit, was a spirit of evil nature. He said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her now. And that hour came out. And so uh, discernment is a must when you're dealing with people. Yes. Because people wear masks. And you're going to have to discern what is of God and what is not of God. And that's why I tell people that want to uh, get up in front of people and and, and talk and preach and prophesy, you better be careful. Because there's some people sitting in the congregation with the spirit of discernment. And they can discern whether that's of God or whether it's not of God. Right? Same way in the pulpit, the man of God discerns and he knows what's of God and what's not of God. <laughs> and so, and so uh, having a candid face-to-face -face discernment is much needed in the church. I can discern it. How is it that we can come to church 
and fellowship with one another, you can't discern that somebody's going through something. Right. <clears throat> right. And so you've got to see through the mask. Because not a lot of people want to be pulled, have full disclosure. For different reasons. Right. You ever do something and you just kept it to yourself? Mm -hmm. And so people call it, I picked up on something. Now, let me just say this uh, before we go any further, because a lot of people that say they got discernment and they don't, they have the spirit of suspicion. <laughs> They're just suspicious about everything. Look at them. <laughs> Something in my spirit. Something in my spirit. No. You're just suspicious. You're suspicious about everything. As a matter of fact, I deserve that you're suspicious. So, discernment is a gift from the spirit. You got to have the spirit to get the gift. You can't, you can't get the apple without the apple tree. Right? And so you've got to have the gift of the Holy Ghost to get the gifts of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God. Don't work that way. And so uh, 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 here's another one. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see here. Let's see. Uh, give it the old Sister Chanel. I mean, young. <laughs> I discerned that she didn't like that. <laughs> Luke 20, verse 23. Book of Luke. Give another example of discernment. Because you're going to have to discern people that come into church. The people come into church with all kinds of issues. But you're going to have to create an atmosphere where people are free enough that they can be real. In order to get us to the place. Uh, what we need to be, we're going to have to be real. We have to be real with God. Luke 20, verse 23. But he perceived their craftiness. Okay, start, uh, uh, start at 21. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither accepted thy the person of any but teacheth the way of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness <laughs> and said unto them, Why tempted ye me? Amen. And so a couple of things are happening here. Number one, you're going to have to have discernment because sometimes people tell you what you want to hear. That's right. Y'all know how it is. All y'all are in relationships. You tell them what they want to hear. Yeah. He said, uh, huh? Does this dress look good? Does <laughs> yeah, that look good on you? <laughs> you, don't, you don't want no problem. <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Every day. Every day. I ask his opinion. Wait a minute. <laughs> Give her the microphone. <laughs> Don't talk out loud. Now everybody's gonna hear you. Facebook Live. You're gonna say about uh, your fiance. I'm sorry. Every day I ask his opinion because what he, what he thinks it matters to me as well. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not gonna say I don't care what other people think, but right. what he thinks it matters to me. That's right. Amen. 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 Okay. So, brother Charles, what do you say about the dress? <laughs> you know, you know. It's like so. I guess I gave approval. <laughs> so I said, I said yes, it's fine. But fine is never fine is not a good answer. Though. <laughs> okay, bro, so I'll give her back. You ain't tell the whole world that you lied to her. <laughs> I learned that. You did, you did, you did. are happening here. One of the things is, is that they said to him, Master, we know that thou said and teaches rightly. So they're trying to appeal to his candor and to his own ability, to his pride. 
And that's what people do. They tell you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, neither we know that you accept the person of any, but you teach the way of God truly. They didn't really believe that. And then they asked him a question. Is it lawful for us to give treatment to Caesar or not? But he perceived or discerned their craftiness right. and said unto them, why tempt you me? Show me the penny, whose image and superscription has it? And asked his Caesar. And then he said, render therefore to Caesar the things that be Caesar, that be God, the things that belong to God. Ooh. He jammed them up. Yeah, man. They did. Mm -hmm. yeah, he did. Right? But he understood their craftiness. And some people are just straight up crafty. Right. Probably even have to have a sermon. Mm -hmm. Because they won't be honest. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. And if I, I ask y'all to show your hands, and I know uh, I'm not going to, but I just know that uh, for the most part, all of us in here has been in a crafty relationship. <laughs> <laughs> now, either you were the one that got crafty, <laughs> or you were the one doing the crafty. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right? And so at that time, uh, you needed discernment or they needed discernment. Mm -hmm. Right? And so uh, in the church, we're going to have to be able to see what's going on. That's right. Because how many know that people tell you anything? Yeah. 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 They'll tell you what they want you to hear. Right? right? I, had, I, tell, I tell this story often that I had a guy that was going to my church and the Lord told me, he said, he's going to leave. And I went that morning and I preached. <laughs> And he came to me and he said, oh, pastor, I just love your preaching. I just love your word. I'll be here forever. I'm not going nowhere. I said, oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. In my mind, I would say, you can really get out of here. <laughs> Next week, he was gone. <laughs> because God told me he was leaving. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to believe God. Amen. Right? Amen. Who's going to believe God? Amen. Because people will tell you anything. You ever ask anybody, are you all right? And what they say? No, I'm good. Right. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right. And when they say it, they're like, they don't even want you to ask them. Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> no, you're not all right. Then on the side of that, if you ever ask somebody, are you all right? And they said no. And they told you this, 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 that wrong with me. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But people don't feel at liberty in the house of God, mainly because they've been hurt. Mm -hmm. And they can't entrust another person with their life. Mm -hmm. But you're entrusting God. And you're going to have to be honest. Yes. Not only with God, but with yourself. Because you can't be honest with God unless you're honest with yourself. That's right. Yes. That's right. Everybody in here is going through something. Mm -hmm. If not, you just live a while. You will. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to have to be open and honest. When you come to the altar, you're going to have to be open and honest with God. Amen. Expecting to receive something. Amen. Okay? And so I just wanted to pull out a couple of examples. Here how, um, here's how uh, Sister Keisha... Give that microphone uh, to Sister Beverly. Sister Beverly, you got your glasses? Yes. <laughs> so I want you to listen to the scripture. Jeremiah chapter 17. Y'all know what? Talks about the heart. Jeremiah 17, verse uh, 9 and 10. The scripture we're reading is in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27. It says, As in water, face after the face, so the heart of man to man. So the water is a reflection of your face. Mm -hmm. It reveals who you are. Mm -hmm. Right? I see it in your face. Right? And so in the book of Jeremiah 17, verse 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Mm -hmm. mm. So, the heart of man is deceitful. Mm -hmm. That's what we look at. So your own heart will lie to you. Mm -hmm. right. In other words, you'll lie to yourself. Yes. 
And you'll deceive your own self. And you'll tell yourself that you're all right and you can handle it. And, and no. But God knows the heart above all. God knows it. Right? And so it's one thing to lie to somebody else. But it's another thing to lie to yourself. And to tell yourself that you're all right when you know right well you're not all right. Keisha. Y'all clap for Sister Keisha. <laughs> don't wind you up, baby. <laughs> I don't know why she left. I ain't gonna be here long. <laughs> um, the verse 10, mm -hmm. the, uh, I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing was a hard pill to swallow because when I was incarcerated, that's what did it. God said, this is, since your heart is this, <laughs> deceitful and desperately wicked, then this is the it's fruit all. This is the fruit of your doings. Exactly. And, it, and, you know, that's, that scripture right there, according to his ways, mm -hmm. I got what I was supposed to get. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the mirror image for real. Yeah, because, because, and Sister Devin has one, because, that's a very good point, Brother Daniel, because uh, if, if, you're, if you're lying to yourself and you're not putting yourself in a position where you can change it, and uh, God knows the heart above all. And then you're going to have to receive the fruit from what you're doing. Mm. And so the fruit Ooh. of it, it lands you in a position where you say, this has got me where I'm at. Right? And now, now, if you're honest and up front, then the fruit of that is going to be righteousness. It's going to be peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Right? That's the fruit you're going to get from it. And so, and so sometimes, not only do we lie to one another, we lie to ourselves. Right? And we know that we need to be doing things better and things differently. And we go in and out from time to time and from year to year trying to repeat the same process over again with no change. Amen. Lying to ourselves, telling us that it's going to get better. And so, uh, uh, after Sister Beth, I'm going to show you the different reflection because not only does the water or the mirror reflect who you are, there's a reflection that shows your heart. Amen. Just like a mirror. Okay? I, I was just going to say that just that, that the heart reflects a, who you really are. Mm -hmm. That's what I was about to say. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so, uh, Sister Keisha, down here, honey. <laughs> And so, and so you have to be able, you can, remember the saying you say you can fool some of the people some of the time? Not all the people. You can't fool all the people none of the time, right? And uh, I've seen, uh, been in situations where people, uh, they're hurting and they say, uh, you need prayer now. No, I'm all right. No, they need prayer. No, you're not all right. <laughs> but because you're lying to yourself, and uh, I perceive that discern that you need it, but you don't want it at this time for whatever reason, then you're going to leave out the same way you came in. Basically, so I was going to say, some people lie because they aren't ready to make that change. They're just not ready to make a change. Right. And so, and so, uh, and then there's different reasons why people aren't ready. Mm -hmm. Somebody give me a reason why somebody won't be ready to change. They like where they are. Mm -hmm. Boom. They like where they're at. Right? And, uh, and so then you eat the fruit of it. <laughs> and then when you get in a high, a high place, a hard place, then here you come. You know, it's amazing to me that how people will come to church to get what they want, and then when they get it, you don't see them. That's right. Because they want no long-term relationship. They want a short-time relationship. But I want you to know that God don't want no part-time lovers. Amen. They want a part-time lover. No more than you want a part-time lover. Some of y'all like it, but <laughs> as the mirrors, you see face to face, see your reflection. There are mirrors that reflect the heart of man to man, right? And so that's why people know where you're at, and people can discern something. Anybody ever told somebody something and you was wondering how they know that? Because you reflected something that I picked up in my spirit. I'm gonna read something to you in the book of Luke chapter six. I want you to get this. Now, now your reflection in the mirror shows you. 
You don't worry about nobody else. You ever took a, a look at yourself in the mirror that was you and like that would be me? I look in the mirror that was me and Brother Don here. And he's in my mirror. <laughs> I'm the only one in my mirror. So you need to look at your reflection. Don't look at nobody else's reflection. That's right. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. The problem is too many people are trying to look at somebody else. That's right. Got my mirror, got me in my mirror, and Kai said, I know. I'm in my mirror by myself. That's right. She said, I'm mirror by herself. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with our heart. Reflects who we are. We've got to worry about who we are. Got time to worry about who you are. In the book of Luke, chapter 6, in verse uh, 41, uh, I'm going to get uh, Keisha bring uh, the microphone that my wife, she's going to read 41 and 42. And uh, Sister Teresa is going to read 43, 44. And uh, 45. Amen. Right? Honey, you'll read 40, uh, what I say, 41 and 42. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how can thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thy thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thy own eye? Thy hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thy own eye, and then shall thou see clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's eye. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so you can't see clearly to discern anybody's heart until you first have your own heart clean. Mm -hmm. Problem is that we're quickly to judge and to look at others, and then we don't realize that our own lives are a mess. That's right. Right? And so, and so first, we've got to pull that out of our eye that I can clearly see you, right? For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For mm -hmm. every tree is known by its own fruit. Mm -hmm. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. Mm -hmm. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of mm -hmm. his heart brings forth evil. Mm -hmm. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Yeah, and so now, uh, just like the mirror, I can see it. It shows your reflection, so I can watch your heart and know what's in your heart by what comes out of your mouth. Wow. <laughs> Your speech reflects what's in your heart. That's right. That's right. Now, I want you to get this because people always talk, and it's true, we, we got to not stop judging others, and uh, uh, but the Holy Ghost judges. That's right. Yeah. Right? And that's why you can discern. But we got to stop judging others. And so people say, stop, don't judge me. Stop judging me. Well, uh, I'm not judging you. I'm just inspecting your fruit. That's right. I'm a fruit inspector. <laughs> oh, you just read? Right? I'm, 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 I'm watching your fruit that falls off your tree. Right. And uh, it says, every tree is known by its own fruit. For if thorns men don't gather figs, you can't from a thorn bush get figs. <laughs> right? And so you can't get raisins off of a pear tree. And so I'm not judging you, I'm just watching your fruit. That way I know what type of tree you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I see your reflection through your speech. And I know out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. I can reflect what type of person you are just by sitting down and having a conversation with you. Right? And why I heard what I heard you talk about, I know what's in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And so when you say, I hate you, I don't love you, then I got to just go by what came out of your heart. And when you say one thing and do another, I just got to, I noticed that that reflection is by your speech. You remember, it was Peter when uh, they took Jesus. And uh, they said, oh, he's a Galatian. We know him too. He was with them. And then Peter started cursing <laughs> Yeah. Getting all mad. And they said, your speech betrays you. Your speech. That's right. 
tells us who you are. Because the Galatians had a certain speech. Like y'all, who's from Christian? Y'all. <laughs> who's from Salisbury? Y'all from Salisbury? The bird. Mm. Y'all from Easton? Mm -hmm. Cordova? Mm -hmm. Y'all mm -hmm. <laughs> from Hillsboro and Hillsboro? Trying to sound all city fire. Oh, uh, we from we from Philadelphia, you know y'all not y'all from Philadelphia. We from the city, you know, not we from the woods. And your language is wood talk. Wood talk if you could. And so, your, your speech tells what's going on in your heart. Well, what is it when some people tell you what you want to hear and you don't, you don't know they're saying all the right things? You're going to have to have discernment. Mm. You're going to have to be able to discern what they're telling you. Mm -hmm. I know people that look you right in the face and lie to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all been in relationship that they look you in the face and lie to you, still lie to you. You deserve it, yes, you lie to you. But I'm going to help you out today. Amen. They done lied to you so long, you're conducive to believing a lie. <laughs> let, let me tell you this. I wanted to say this so bad uh, Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night on, on you all stay. I wanted to, but it was too long to type. I wanted to say this so bad when they were asking for a sign, right? And here's a sign. When someone is treating you bad, and they're putting you down, and they're cheating on you and doing all kinds of things against you, but they're making you apologize for what they're doing, you're in the hand of a master manipulator. You should type that. I wanted to say that. Because when they begin to manipulate you and then you apologize and they cheat on you, talk, honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean not to take you to the store. <laughs> I didn't take you to the store and you went out and you got Sally. <laughs> <laughs> you're not taking them to the store to make them cheat on you? <laughs> and you're apologizing for what he's done to you? You're in the hand of a master manipulator. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. And you don't have to deserve that. I just deserve it for you. Mm -hmm. Somebody clap to the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, it was good to be back from San Diego. I'm going to help y'all get out of some situation. Okay? And so I know. I, I see the reflection of your heart by what you're talking about, by your speech. Mm -hmm. One time I walked into a church and, and the woman from the time I hit the door I had to preach, from the time I hit, the, the, I was in the church at the time, from the time I hit the, the vestibule and walked up, I was getting ready to go to preach, and she talked to me about the ravers from the time I hit the door to the time I got up to preach. And I was like, get this woman away from me. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I heard her about the football, I'm ready to preach. Just <laughs> correct. <laughs> You talk to me after service. <laughs> That's where her heart was at. <laughs> her heart was with the Ravens. <laughs> what, what, what with Jesus? <laughs> so, here's what the Lord says in the book of James. Honey, this is scripture the Lord gave. In the book of James, uh, chapter 1, verse 22. Uh, Keisha, can you give that microphone to Sister Mamie? And that was from your cousin. <laughs> James uh, chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. I want you to see your reflection on the day. I want you to see yourself because God already sees you. Uh, May the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. Am I helping? But 
but you doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For, for, for if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Oh. Mm. For he beholdeth himself, and knoweth his wife, and straight away forgetteth the manner of forget the manner of the man he was. Mm. For he looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work of his work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. This is a blessed man. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. And so uh, for all of us they come and hear the word of God, but we don't put the word of God into practical application. Mm -hmm. The Bible says here that we're just a hearer, but not a doer. Mm -hmm. That we are deceiving yourself. our own selves. Right. Now there's one thing to have somebody else deceive you, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to have your own self to deceive you. Wow. And that's why the heart is deceitful and wicked right. above all. Because you can lie to yourself sitting right in the house of God, right. hearing the word, and not taking the word and putting it in practical application. That's right. The Bible calls you deceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. Just being a hearer, but not a doer. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? It's quiet in here. <laughs> Amen? Right, but Sister Megan, she read the scripture, and so I got to expound on it. Amen. Right? And so we come to church not just to hear the word, but to be a doer yes. of the word. I want to do everything that God is asking me and crying for me to do. If I'll just put it in application, I'm going to be blessed. Amen. I'm going to be blessed. Amen. He says, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Talk about another mirror. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, I didn't know this, but the Lord gave my wife this scripture. I had it in my notes last night. And this morning, about 6, 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, I heard her up praying. And I heard her. And she was, I don't know, she was some type of Asian tongue. She was, uh, she was gone. And she was in the spirit. And she said not a word to me until we got on this back road coming to church. The Lord gave, the Lord gave me the scripture this morning in the book of James about a man who looked at his face in a mirror or in a glass. And I said, wow, you're not going to believe what I'm teaching on this morning. Wow. Amen. Amen. And so I said, wait till I read it. And so that man that uh, uh, is just a uh, hearer but not a door, he's looking in a mirror at himself. Because that's what the word does. It reflects who you are. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's the glass that we have to line up to look like. The mirror image of the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Right? And the Word became flesh. We are all changed into His image from glory to glory. The image of God is what He mirrors us to be like Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why if you're just a hearer,
down here, you tell them I'm just your fruit. Don't judge the fruit is back. The people are yelling quick in the in, in, in church. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. No, I'm just, I'm just respecting your fruit. The fruit is back to you. I'm respecting your fruit. So I want you to remember this, that uh, we have to reflect our own image and remember where God has brought us. You ready? Exodus chapter 23 and verse 9. Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for you know not, for you know the heart of a stranger, seeing you are strangers in the land of Egypt. So God, is that it? Thank you. Amen. So God told them, don't you oppress a stranger? Being that you have a stranger's heart when you were in Egypt. In other words, don't be too hard on people. You have the same heart. You know what they went through. You 